Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you again for making time for the Vitalist Health Foundation Medical Assistance Grants Virtual Information Session. Um, I am uh, the, David Martinez, the Director of Community Engagement here at Vitalist, and I'm joined by a lot of my colleagues here, many of whom are watching out for the um, the chat room for any questions that arise from there or any technical issues uh, that may arise uh, for this uh, virtual session, but it is being recorded um, and uh, all lines should be uh, muted, um, but we'll have an opportunity for folks to go off of mute um, after the formal presentation to ask questions, um, but feel free to put those questions into the chat room as uh, the presentation uh, begins. Um, we are being recorded um, for this information session and the, the recording, the slide deck, and a follow-up FAQ document or frequently asked uh, questions document will be posted on our website, uh, specifically the webpage for medical assistance grants. We are uh, try to be as accessible um, as possible, especially specifically for our medical assistance providers that provide vision or hearing uh, support. Um, so cl closed captioning is available, and I will toss it over to my colleague Virginia for a brief comment as well. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, nada más para decirles que si uh, tiene algún um, socio comunitario que habla solo español, también estamos disponibles para ofrecer servicios en español bilingües. Eh, nada más nos puede escribir a nuestro correo electrónico que es conversemos arroba vitalist.org. Um, I just said in Spanish for so everyone to understand uh, that we also offer bilingual services, both in Spanish and in English. So if you have a community partner or an organization that is interested in applying, but maybe only has capability in Spanish, please do send them forward to us. They can still submit the application in Spanish and we'll be able to translate and take care of that language barrier. Great, thank you so much, Virginia. Uh, you just heard from Virginia, and if you didn't see her face, this is her uh, amazing uh, headshot. She's our program manager for learning and evaluation, um, and these are our, your other grants contacts. Again, I'm David Martinez, the Director of Community Engagement. I oversee our Capacity Building and Grants Program here at Vitalist, um, but do so with uh, a great team, even not reflected on this slide. Uh, you'll also, uh, also uh, perhaps hear from my colleague, Kelsey Otten, who is our Assistant Director of Partner Engagement. And then new to the Vitalist team, not even with a, a headshot yet, is Michelle Goodthunder, who is our Program Manager for Grants and Partnerships as well. You see all of our emails um, on this slide, uh, as well as broader emails that go to our team to uh, just be really open and accessible uh, to answer any questions that you might have um, throughout this uh, grant. Opening slide, housekeeping that we just reviewed, the Vitalist Grants contacts, which I just uh, told you about. Those are those amazing headshots that I mentioned, except for Michelle, who is new, but our contact information is listed there as well. Um, for those who don't know, a little bit of background about Vitalist Health Foundation. Uh, we're uh, about a 25-year-old organization that has been in uh, Arizona doing a lot of work to improve the health of people and communities throughout the state of Arizona. Um, and we do so in a lot of different ways, but we especially focus on um, upstream systems change efforts that uh, really take a village. So we work to connect, support, and inform uh, those efforts. Again, based in, we're based here in Phoenix, but we partner uh, throughout the state of Arizona. Uh, we have three goals at Vitalist Health Foundation. As I mentioned, we work in the upstream systems change efforts. That takes a village, that takes collaborative networks, coalitions of folks that are working to improve the conditions that impact health. Of course, those coalitions and collaborative networks are made up of individual partners that we want to ensure are strong as well. So we have specific goal area around strengthening community partners, especially so that they're equipped to advance uh, health equity and um, work with uh, populations and communities that face the biggest disparities in health. And because we work uh, towards system change, that often includes uh, advocacy and public policy efforts, specifically to inform decision makers um, and work uh, with those groups, those folks, to priorities, community health and well-being. Within those three goals, we prioritize specific activities 
uh, in these four priority areas of civic health, food systems, healthcare integration, and housing. So we have activities uh, that support coalitions, that strengthen community partners, and that inform decision makers in each of these four priority areas. But of course, do many additional opportunities that um, uh, that show health is more than just health care and that engage communities um, both as a, as a programmatic foundation, but also through our responsive grant making program. Uh, beyond just those four priority areas, we have an open door policy at Vitalist. We partner with organizations throughout the state of Arizona and have really been working the past couple of years to streamline and coordinate those partnership opportunities to be uh, to be more responsive and better uh, match vitalist uh, partnership opportunities with the specific needs of community partners. Uh, we have created what we call our discovery process to discover partnership with vitalist and, and our partners across the state. Um, it's a, a streamlined intake process where folks can, uh, um, uh, any organization that wants to discover partnership with Vitalist can uh, begin. It's a, an intake form that uh, is on our website, vitalisthealth.org, and you can uh, identify what partnership opportunity might be the best fit. Be connected with the uh, Vitalist team member that um, uh, might be able to have the, the best conversation with you to identify those partnership opportunities and then leverage the resources from there. Those partnership opportunities are pretty uh, wide um, and a variety of those. Many folks are familiar with our two-tiered grants program called the Systems Change and Spark Grants. Um, those are meant for collaboratives working towards systems change, but we also provide capacity building support through technical assistance grants and advocacy and public policy grants. So if your organization uh, needs some capacity building for your organization or for your, the infrastructure of your organization, we have technical assistance grants for those. And because we are engaging in advocacy and public policy, we want to build nonprofit capacity in that space as well. So uh, leverage those resources. But today we'll be focusing on our medical assistance grants, um, which um, are really unique for Vitalist because uh, many folks see uh, Vitalist uh, and the will, the elements of a healthy uh, community will um, that um, that we've uh, launched, gosh, more than five years ago now, seeing health as more than health care or looking at those social determinants of health. Um, but the medical assistance grants are a really unique um, grant program for Vitalist. For those who don't know, Vitalist House Foundation actually um, uh, was founded uh, in the mid-90s when the St. Luke's Hospital System here in Phoenix uh, went from a nonprofit hospital to a for-profit entity. And with the sale of the hospital, the hospital foundation separated and formed what is now Vitalist Health Foundation. Uh, at that early time in the mid nineties, it was St. Luke's Charitable Health Trust, then St. Luke's Health Initiatives, and now Vitalist Health Foundation. Um, and when that, uh, the, 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 when the foundation separated from the hospital and formed what is now Vitalist, um, some of the donor specific um, buckets of funds from the hospital transferred over to the care of Vitalist, and those are our medical assistance grants. So they're still donor directed, and that's why, as you'll see in a little bit, they're really specific and have clear um, outcomes from uh, the, the uh, donors who invested originally in uh, St. Luke's hospitals. Um, they are not new program for, for Vitalist, um, but um, they have been uh, evolving over the past couple years because we usually open them up through this open request for proposal or RFP system every three years. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic that started uh, now almost more than two years ago uh, in trying to practice trust-based philanthropy and relational grant making, simply worked with our existing medical assistance grant partners and extended their existing grant partnerships because um, uh, like a lot of uh, folks on this uh, on this webinar and uh, throughout the world, um, we're experiencing really challenging times with the pandemic. So we wanted to be as flexible and open with our grant partners uh, and simply extended those uh, uh, grant partnerships for an additional year 
And then obviously the pandemic uh, kept going. So we, uh, with the support of our board and leadership extended it into a second year. Um, now, obviously the pandemic is still ongoing and we hope everybody is staying safe and your families are doing well. Um, but wanted to, uh, had a bit more flexibility with opening up the three year RFP process, which is where we're at now. It is an open request for a proposal process uh, for nonprofits or fiscally sponsored organizations um, in, that are doing direct services, treatments, or programs in four areas. So there are four different grant types within the medical assistance grants. So if you're a nonprofit or fiscally sponsored organization that's providing services in hearing or vision or substance use disorder or heart and lung services, then you, uh, you may be eligible uh, for our medical assistance grants. Those organizations have to be doing direct services for low-income or underserved populations only in Maricopa County. This is a directive as part of our medical assistance grants. So if you're doing uh, uh, direct services, even in those four areas outside of Maricopa County, this grant is only meant for direct services in Maricopa County. So we applaud your tremendous work in all of the other 14 counties, but this particular medical assistance grant is only for direct services in Maricopa County. Those services are pretty broad, um, but uh, they, again, in those four areas, hearing, vision, substance use disorder, and heart and lung, uh, can be things such as screening, training, surgeries, any program development related to that direct service, and any client-related equipment, such as assistive devices and adaptive equipment. Um, and we'll take a deeper dive into each of these uh, criteria aspects. So um, we uh, can be as clear as possible. And then of course, open it up for questions as we move uh, throughout the, um, the webinar. The award amounts, again, there are four uh, grant types within the medical assistance grants. For the hearing grants, we have a total of $333,000 annually to give out over the next three years. Um, and each individual grant award is up to $150,000 per year. So uh, if you are a direct service provider here in Maricopa County for uh, low income or underserved populations working in the hearing space, you can apply for medical assistance grants up to $150,000 per year for three years. In the vision space, we have uh, the same amount of resources per year and a total bucket of about $300,000 available per year. For the substance use disorder uh, and, and service organizations here in Maricopa working in that space, we have a total of $25,000 available and we'll grant up to uh, that amount uh, annually as well. And for those organizations that are providing direct services here in Maricopa County in the heart and lung space, uh, we have a total of $100,000 available and we'll be providing grants of up to $50,000 per year. This is our uh, virtual information session that we're hosting today, January 20th. Uh, our grant cycle officially opens next week, January 24th. It's an online grant portal um, that we have, again, streamlined and coordinated a lot of our partnership opportunities through. If you're familiar with our vital assistance change and SPARC grant processes, it's that same grant online portal uh, called WiseHive that we use as our grants management system. We provide our uh, service organizations uh, two months to draft their proposals, uh, and they will be due on March 24th by 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, through that online portal. Then our staff uh, uh, board, uh, a vitalist, and board of vitalist do our grant reviews, and ultimately our board approves um, those and, uh, and votes on them, and then we'll make award notifications into June for, again, a three-year grant period beginning on July 1 of this year and going all the way to June 30th, 2026. So now let's get into some of the medical assistance grants criteria. Um, we Not much has changed with this. If you're familiar with our medical assistance grants, they might just be framed a little bit uh, differently than what, you're no, uh, what, than what you have seen in the past. As I mentioned, uh, these grants are meant for uh, nonprofits or fiscally sponsored organizations that are providing direct service in the areas of hearing, vision, substance use disorder, or heart and lung. Uh, that direct service has to be uh, for populations that are low income or underserved in Maricopa County. 
is part of your uh, proposal, you'll include a, a budget uh, for the amount you're requesting, again, up to those amounts that we just reviewed in the previous slide, and we evaluate uh, the proposals that uh, they are indeed direct services for a three-year time period. And then uh, the reporting, we try to streamline uh, as well. So we do mid-year uh, 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 report submissions and then annual report submissions over the, the three-year grant period. Um, so each uh, organization should um, uh, maintain a, a log of recorded direct services and uh, we'll submit those uh, in the middle of the uh, fiscal year, which for us runs July 1 to June 30th, and then annually as well. So what do we mean by direct service? Um, this medical assistance, again, is has to be related to direct services in the areas of hearing, vision, substance use disorder, or heart and lung. That direct service can include all of these uh, uh, examples, uh, any service that uh, provides screening within those four areas, any surgeries within those four areas, program-related uh, uh, expenses that are connected to uh, providing that direct service, and then any equipment that you need to, uh, to help with your, uh, your clients or patients in those four areas. So for instance, if you are a medical assistance grant partner in hearing, that would be like hearing aids or for vision, glasses, or contacts, um, or the screening that, uh, say, an op optometrist would do for vision, um, or an aud audiologist would do for hearing, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. So any direct service um, relating in those four, um, uh, four uh, grant areas. The specific points that we look for in the proposals um, are that the, the service that you provide is really clearly identified and described. Um, that the services may be leveraging existing resources that your organization or your partnerships are doing, that there really is a grand community uh, impact. We're looking at the amount of people that are being served and that um, you're not just some Johnny come lately. You have experience and the capacity to uh, provide this direct service. An important aspect to remember with this information uh, session and with these slides covering each of the criteria the specific points that are reflected in each of the slides, so for direct service, these four bullet points, these are the exact same questions that our grant review team will assess and, and see if your proposal uh, answers them adequately. So as our president and CEO at Vitala says, this is like an open book test. If you answer these four questions, these four specific points relating to your direct service, you will probably, your proposal will be uh, stronger in that way. So keep that in mind as you're drafting your proposal. So that's uh, one of the criteria is that you have to be a direct service provider in these four areas. The next criteria is about population served. This direct service being provided has to be for low income and underserved populations in Maricopa County. How do we define low income and underserved populations? It's if those, uh, po those populations, your clients or your patients um, are enrolled in a government assistance program. These are programs like the SNAP or food stamp program, ACCESS, our state Medicaid uh, system, the child health insurance program, any of the uh, government assistance programs uh, uh, here offered through, throughout the state. Temporary assistance for needy family or cash assistance is another great example of this. This is a newer assessment of a population served. We basically looked at uh, what um, the, 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 poverty, the poverty level of low income and underserved populations were and decided let's go ahead and make this uh, a clear uh, definition of what we mean by that. So as you're providing that direct service to your clients and patients, and you simply ask, are you enrolled in SNAP? Are you receiving access? If they say yes, then they would qualify for the direct service that could be then covered by the medical assistance grants. So that is one uh, way we define low income or underserved. Another way is you can assess the patient or your client's annual household income. And uh, this was a, a measurement that we used previously, but we have increased this uh, threshold to 250% of federal poverty guidelines. Uh, here in Arizona, that is set at $33,975 for one individual, or as you can see, for a family of four, 
just shy of $70,000. And then the next slide, I'll look at the um, specific thresholds that we look at um, that the federal government puts out every year. So as you're seeing your clients and patients and you ask, does your family household income fall within the, this bracket? If they answer yes, uh, you can provide direct service to them that can be then covered by the medical assistance grants. So those are kind of the two big definitions uh, that we use when we when we mean low income and underserved populations. So if your clients or patients fall within those definitions, um, their direct service can be provided and covered by our medical assistance grants. We wanted to provide additional clarification about what we mean by underserved populations as well. If you know Vitalist, you know that we hold a health equity lens in all of our work, again, trying to um, work with those populations and communities that are facing the greatest disparities in health, and those include but are not limited to those uh, uh, populations or communities that have limited financial means, are uh, from communities of color, are people with disabilities, the LGBTQ plus community and rural communities within Maricopa County. So this is an added um, uh, definition of what we mean by underserved populations. So again, in your proposal, if your organization is providing direct service for low income individuals, those individuals that are enrolled in government assistance programs, or have household incomes less than 250% of federal poverty, uh, poverty guidelines, and your organization specifically works with these uh, communities, uh, that proposal will, will be stronger in that sense. And you can see those specific points that again, if you answer as part of your proposal, will make for a stronger uh, proposal because those are the exact same points that our grant review team reviews. So making sure that the population of focus, your geographic region is, um, uh, is uh, to be served is clearly identified. Remember, this is uh, for direct service provided in Maricopa County, but if you're focused on um, the West Valley or uh, Central Phoenix or Gila Bend, uh, definitely outline that, especially again, if you have a focus on those residents with the greatest uh, disparities in health. We look at the number of individuals that you uh, expect to serve. Uh, we really are trying to serve as many uh, individuals that often fall through the cracks or cannot normally access these this medical assistance. So definitely put that into your proposal. Um, and uh, again, any effort that you have uh, with the, the focus of residents or communities uh, experiencing greatest disparities in health will uh, be tremendous as well. Um, we also, uh, as part of the reporting, uh, you need to maintain a log of, of the individual uh, services that are provided. So the, uh, note the capacity for your entity to do that in your proposal as well. And as noted, here is sort of a, a better breakdown of the 2022 poverty guidelines. You can look at the, the federal government website uh, through the Health and Human Services. I linked it there for the guidelines, but this is 250 uh, percent federal, federal poverty level. Um, so again, for a family uh, or household income of one, you, uh, if you make less than $34,000, your direct service in uh, the four areas of our medical assistance can be covered through our grants. And then if it, your family size goes up from there, you can see what the household income thresholds are. Your proposal should also uh, include a budget. Within the narrative itself, you can talk high level and provide a greater narrative of uh, uh, the, the scope of work or how you intend on leveraging the resources, but there's a separate um, budget template that you'll uh, uh, be able to upload as part of your proposal that's not included in the page limit that we'll discuss in, in just a few. So you can outline the specific provider expenses, direct service expenses, um, all the other expen allowable expenses and outline those in that budget template. Um, that really shows that the, the, the budget proposal is consistent with your proposed scope of work. Uh, and again, this really is meant for only direct services um, in those criteria areas for the three year time period. And again, the, the uh, amounts for each of the four types of medical assistance grants are highlighted there. 
Um, and again, the specific points are the exact same questions that our grant review team looks at. So we just wanna make sure that the budget that you're proposing is consistent with the proposed scope of work. And you'll have an opportunity again to provide a greater narrative to just answer and, and provide a bit more clarity with the funding request. So once you have, if you feel like you've, you, you meet the criteria and you're ready to begin drafting your uh, medical assistance grant proposal, um, uh, you can, if you'd like um, any clarifying questions, set up a time to chat with me. Uh, if you just go to vitalisthealth.org, there's a tab on the upper part of the website that says grants and partnering with Vitalist. Um, you'll see all of our partnership opportunities again, but complete that discovery form. And if you do so, select interested in medical assistance grants. That way we know that you are interested in talking about this. And uh, to clarify, if you might be eligible or if you're not sure of maybe specific program related expenses connected with that direct service, we can just clarify any questions there um, and ensure that you are definitely um, eligible to uh, apply for a medical assistance grant. So this is our mechanism to practice trust-based philanthropy and the values of vitalists of just being open and accessible. So it won't have any negative impact on your ability to partner with vitalists unless it's decided that um, you fall outside of the, the eligibility criteria, but we just try to be open and uh, have those honest conversations so you don't um, waste too much time applying if, you know, if we know you're not in, uh, automatically uh, eligible. If it's determined that you are eligible, you wanna submit a proposal, again, it's through our uh, online portal um, submission. Uh, if you've gone through the Vitalist Systems Change or Spark Grant process, you're familiar with this. Um, we have a how-to guide uh, to help you step-by-step -step walk through that online portal if it's something new for you. Um, we'll also send, or we'll also again, post these resources on our website so you can access them later. Uh, the, these slides, uh, the recording, and then that FAQ doc, uh, an FAQ document, which will include that how-to guide. The proposal is no more than four pages. So you have four pages to, uh, to describe yourself, your organization, uh, the direct service that you, you intend on provide, uh, providing within uh, one of those four areas of our medical assistance grants, um, the populations you're serving, hitting on, the, again, those specific points. Um, pretty common uh, uh, font size margins uh, and file types accepted that you'll be able to upload to that grant uh, online portal. And again, separately, you'll have the opportunity to submit your budget template spreadsheet that was linked on that budget slide deck and will include in the FAQ document as well. So it's a pretty cut and dry grant process and proposal. Hopefully you see that because as, as we reviewed, these are um, uh, sort of from the hospital foundation donor directed funds that are now in the care of Vitalist Health Foundation that are really intended to uh, support direct service in those medical assistance areas of vision, hearing, substance uh, use disorder, and heart and lung. Um, and re really look forward to uh, learning more. So I will uh, begin to, or I will stop sharing my screen and put ourselves in gallery mode and see some questions coming in, but also happy to um, uh, toss it over to any one of my colleagues, Kelsey, Virginia, or Michelle, if any questions came in during the presentation, uh, or feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself if you have a specific question. Let's see, a question just came in about, is there a minimum amount for requests? A minimum amount per request? Sure, yeah. Um, so you there, we only allow one application for each grant type. So you can, if you're an organization, I'm uh, XYZ organization, I submit one application for hearing if I do that. If you also provide vision services, you can submit a second second application for, for vision and be considered separately for vision, two separate proposals. Um, so you can apply for one or more of the four different types. Um, and then for each type, 
it's up to that specific grant amount. So for instance, if you are applying for the hearing medical assistance grants, you could apply for up to $150,000 per year for three years. So, and so just to clarify, um, per grant type, there's not like a, a minimum amount of funding that you need to request. Not a minimum amount. Okay, perfect. But keep in mind, we're really looking for impact. So um, we really want to uh, distribute the funds, get them out to community partners to, to meet the, the most need in our community. Again, for those, uh, those uh, of our neighbors who otherwise wouldn't be able to access these, these, these assisted services. So we're really looking for impact on that front. Any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself. We're a friendly crowd. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the chat room? No. Great. Well, we might be able to give you back about 15 or 20 more minutes. Um, if again, if you have any other questions or want to connect offline, uh, go to vitalisthealth.org um, and uh, and click on that grants drop down menu where you'll see partnering with Vitalist and uh, complete our discovery process, a quick intake form, select interest in medical assistance grants, and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one conversation via Zoom or phone. But before we leave, um, or before I leave, uh, I see a hand raised from Virginia Thompson. Hi. Hi, Virginia. To, hi, I'm from the Arizona Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, if we are providing services for deaf, blind, and that's the ASR part, and providing direct services for the blind and visually impaired, we can apply for two, for both grants? Correct. Oh, okay, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> that was an easy one, Virginia. You got any hard questions? <laughs> Not yeah, give me a few minutes, I'm sure I can come up with something. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Yeah, we know there are a lot of great community partners that are providing both vision and hearing services. So we invite you to apply for, uh, to submit two separate proposals for each of those grant types. Great. Well, I think that wraps us up for today. Again, I'll close with uh, where we are open and accessible to have conversations to answer any specific questions, especially regarding your eligibility uh, leading up to the uh, submission date of March 24th. If you also have any other questions about what Vitalist may have um, funded in the past, if you go to our grants uh, webpage at vitalisthealth.org, you'll see our existing uh, medical assistance grants partners. Um, we are so grateful for all of their work and are, are so grateful uh, to explore uh, continued and ongoing partnerships, new partnerships that are providing these really critical direct service um, support uh, for communities and our neighbors in need throughout Maricopa County. So thank you so much for all that you all are doing, and we look forward to reviewing your proposals for our Vitalist Medical Assistance Grants. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye. <laughs>